In this video, I want to explain what is meant by sampling from a distribution. And to explain this concept, I'm first of all going to start off by talking about what it means to sample a die. Well, what I mean by sampling a die really is I just throw the die and I record the number which results. And if we were to repeat that process a large number of times, what we could do is we could draw out a plot of the different frequencies of each of the numbers that we obtained on throwing the die. And if it was a fair die, each of the heights of these rectangles here that I'm drawing should be roughly the same if we throw the die a large number of times. But in a small enough sample, they would differ just because of sampling variation. So sampling from this die seems to make quite a lot of sense. We can then imagine making our die a bit weirder if we, instead of having a finite number of faces, here we just had six, we let the number of faces of our die go to infinity, and on each of those faces of the die we can imagine, say, a number between zero and one, such that all of the numbers between zero and one are represented. Then we would get out a continuous distribution between zero and one. And if there was some weighting towards some of those faces, we might obtain a distribution of the different values that we obtain on throwing this sort of strange die a large number of times, which might look something like this blue line here. So this blue line here represents the limit where I've let the width of the bins of my histogram go to zero, and because of that, I've got a kind of continuous line here. Those of you that know Cantor sets will also know that we actually can't construct a die which has these properties, but just go with me for this. It's just meant to be a thought experiment. So we can kind of understand what is meant by sampling from an object, here a die, whether it be a sort of standard die or a slightly weirder one. But what does it actually mean to sample from a distribution? Well, the idea in sampling from a distribution is that we imagine that there is some process, and we don't understand that process particularly well necessarily, but what we can do is we can sort of run that process. And each time we run that process, we get outputted a value. And we might run it once and we obtain one value from that process. Then we run it again and we obtain a different value, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we do this an infinite number of times. Then, really, if we were to carry out this process an infinite number of times, if the process just outputted discrete values, then we would obtain a discrete distribution, a discrete probability distribution. If, by contrast, the process outputted a continuum of values, then if we were to draw the histogram of all the different values and then let the width of the histogram go to zero, then we would obtain a continuous distribution. And these probability distributions are drawn under the assumption that I've sampled from the process an infinite number of times. And that really is the definition of a probability distribution. It is meant to mimic the process of sampling from a given process an infinite number of times and then drawing the histogram of all of those samples. And this is the key to understanding what it means to sample from a distribution. Because when you think about just sampling from a distribution, say I have a distribution between 0 and 1 and I sample a value from that and get 0 0.35, that doesn't really make that much sense. But when you think about a distribution as representing some process which is being sampled from an infinite number of times, what we really mean when we say we're going to sample from a distribution is we mean we run this process. And the idea being, if we're running this process in the limit of an infinite number of samples, then we would obtain the distribution from which we're trying to sample from. So let me say that again. The idea is that when you sample from a distribution, essentially what you are doing is you are sampling from the process, which if sampled from an infinite number of times, would yield the histogram, which looks like the distribution. So it's only when we think about sampling as being this way around that it actually makes sense to sample from a distribution. Otherwise, it seems like quite a strange concept. There are two predominant methods for sampling from a distribution. The most simple one to explain is known as independent sampling, and that's akin to throwing our die. Each time we throw our die, that's an independent sample from the underlying probability distribution which represents that die. Alternatively, there is a different type of sampling method, which is known as dependent sampling. And the predominant method for doing dependent sampling is known as Markov chain Monte Carlo. And it's this type of sampling method which is used in Bayesian statistics. 